Hi again, Augie Kennedy here, and we're back in with Super Awesome Calculus. We're still on Chapter 1. Uh, today we're going to be on Section 1.3. This is all about transformations of functions. We're going to take some of the functions we talked about last week, and we're going to manipulate them graphically so you can see what the effect of adding things, subtracting things, multiplying things is going to have on these functions. Before we do that, though, let's look at last week's, or why do I keep saying that? Last lecture's big problem. Now, the problem, if you recall, the relationship between Fahrenheit, F, and Celsius, C, temperature scales, is given by the linear function F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. And I ask you to graph the function and to say what the slope of the graph uh, is and what it represents, and what the F intercept is and what it represents. Now, as a little side note, you may note that I really didn't spend that much time talking about linear functions. I did briefly address it, but I didn't dwell on it too much. If I pass over something, you can absolutely try to figure this out. You know, you can plug and chug and come up with a way to find out what the graph of that function looks like. Or you could just wait till I go over it. Although, I would recommend trying to see if you can figure out a way your own, yourself and then come learn the more formal way to do it here. Or, since this is a pretty easy question, you probably didn't have much trouble with it. So let's go over it. Sketch a graph of the function. Well, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to erase 1.3. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a coordinate plane here. We're going to draw x, y. Now in this case, we're going to look at this as f equals 9 fifths c plus 32. In other words, what we're going to say is we're going to look at it like this. y instead of f equals 9 fifths x plus 32. Okay. Whenever I see uh, a question that uses different variables, I like to bring it back to x and y if I can, because that makes it a little bit easier to look at. So we see y, or if you prefer, f of x equals 9 fifths x plus 32. Okay, well the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to plug in the intercept. And if you remember, the intercept is going to be with 0, with the uh, x variable equaling 0. So 9 fifth times 0 is 0, plus 32 is 32. So the f intercept, or the x intercept, or the, the y intercept is 32. 32. Okay? Um, and then you can plot points. The slope, uh, if you remember, this is, sl this is a linear equation, slope intercept form. We have the slope right here. 9 fifths. So we know that the slope is 9 fifths. So we can use that information to plot some other points. Uh, 100, 212, negative 40, negative 40. And we can see that the, it looks kind of like that. I mean, very, very roughly, it looks like that. Um, and that is basically more or less, I'm not a very good graphical artist here, but, but we have an increasing function. And the uh, f-intercept, or y-intercept, whichever, or f of x-intercept, whatever you want to call it, is 32. And that obviously is what happens when x, or c, is 0. So we could say that the f-intercept is when Celsius equals zero, and we know this to be true at zero degrees Celsius equals 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The slope, nine-fifths, is how much F or changes every time C increases. So if C goes up by one, F is going to go up by nine-fifths. You know, it's, that's exactly what it means. So that's the answer to, uh, to this week's this lecture's big problem, or last lecture's big problem. 
And now we're going to go on to talk a little bit about transformations. Okay? Now, we have quite a few. We're going to talk about transformations, and we're going to talk a little bit about composite functions in this lecture. There are quite a few transformations to get through, so I'm going to just try to go through all of them. Let's start with the first four. y equals f of x. I hope this is visible. Let me make it a little bit bigger. y equals f of x plus c. y equals f of x minus c. y equals f of x plus c y equals, you guessed it, f of x minus c. Now you'll notice the parentheses here are very, very, very important because they're going to dramatically alter the graph. We're going to use as our example here f of x equals x squared. Okay? So here's our little graphical window that we're going to work with. Let me slide this over. If we have x squared, if you remember, it's a parabola, plus c. So if we have x squared plus 2 equals f of x, what that's going to be is it's going to be this parabola shifted up 2. It's kind of like that. If we have f of x minus 2 equals uh, f of x equals x squared minus 2, you might assume correctly that it's going to be the same parabola, but just shifted down 2. Same size, same shape. The only thing that changes is its intercept. And that's basically what an upshift or a downshift does. It changes the height. Now, if we have the uh, addition or subtraction inside the parentheses, though, that changes things. Let's use x squared again. If we have x squared plus c, plus c, that's going to shift us to the left. So if we have f of x equals, let's see, f of x equals x squared plus 2, we're going to actually shift to the left 2, not to the right. And if we have f of x squared minus 2, well, then we are going to shift to the right 1, 2. And to put it all together here, if we have, for instance, make this as easy as we possibly can, Wow, a lot of racing. If we have f of x equals x squared minus 2 plus 2, like that, you might assume, and correctly, that we're going to take the parabola x squared, we're going to move it to the right 2, and we're going to shift it up 2. All right? So that's the way that we can look at an equation, or we can look at a function like this. Not an equation, we're not in algebra. We can look at a function like this, and we can have a good idea about what the graph of it looks like right away. Right away. We know what that's going to look like. Next up, we're going to look at vertical, we're going to look at stretching and reflecting and stuff like that. There's a lot more going on here. I'm going to look at the book really fast and make sure that we got this. Now, okay, I want to make sure that I hit every one of these. Y equals, remember Y, F of X, same thing. Y equals C, F, X, there we go. Um, that's going to be a stretching of the graph by C. That makes sense. So for instance, if we have x squared, and we have 
2x squared, instead of this, we're going to stretch. Understood? 2 times x is going to be x squared. 2 times, 2 times, it's going to be 2, it's going to be bigger, a fatter looking graph. Because the x, where before x squared, 1, x equals 1, is 1. This time, x equals 1, well, we have 2x, so we, we, it completely changes the dynamic of this graph. Now, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, cut, start over again at vertical stretching. Kind of got my terms crossed uh, really quick. Sorry about that. I'm stretching and compressing. The way that the book phrases it, I'm not the biggest fan. Point is, if we have something like this, y equals cf of x, and we're going to also have y equals 1 over c f of x, or anything like that, we're going to be looking at a stretch or a compression. It's a compression is just a negative stretch, but it's all going to be vertically. So if we have 2, if we have x squared, 2x squared equals y. Okay? That's our function. If x is 1, y is 1 squared is 1, 2. If x is 2, 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8. So instead of this, we're going to have a much sharper graph. Conversely, with 1 half, it'll work the exact opposite. If the function is 1 half x squared equals y, or as I frequently write, x squared over 2 equals y, same thing. If you have that, you're going to have a fatter graph. And that's stretching and compressing. That's what that's all about. Remember, a big number in front of uh, the x is going to make it skinnier because you're going to be multiplying. A, small, a number smaller than one, you're going to be stretching it out. Now, that's vertical stretching, horizontal stretching and compressing. Y equals f of cx. And y equals f x over c. This also probably works more or less, more or less like how you'd think. Uh, let's use Hmm. I'm trying to think of a good one here. Let's use cosine. Let's use cosine x equals f of x. That's a pretty good one. We know the cosine graph looks basically like that. That's cosine. You know, it has an intercept of 1, and it just kind of, it's periodic. It keeps rolling and rolling and undulating. All right. So, cosine x is f of x. If we have cosine 2x equals f of x, yeah, then that's going to, um, that's going to change things a bit. That's going to make the periodicity a lot narrower. We're, gonna, we're still going to be just as high as we were, but it's going to happen twice as quick. You know, it's, it's actually compressing. It's becoming skinnier. The waves are becoming skinnier with 2x. So instead of a nice, let me make this a little bit neater, and easier to understand, Kind of a tricky concept to articulate. You 
that this graph right here is cosine 2x. Now if we have cosine 1 half x equals f of x, well, we're going to have the exact opposite issue. It's going to be much more expanded. So that's the way horizontal compression, uh, expansion and compression work. Um, pretty important, pretty important. But like, as is the case with many of these things, we'll see, we'll see more explicit usage of this, and it should be a lot more intuitive when you see it in action. Um, also, y equals negative f of x. This is pretty simple. This is flip it around the x-axis, flip x. y equals f negative x, flip y. Okay, so see an example of this. We're going to go back to our good friend y equals x squared. If we have y equals negative x squared, well, 1 is going to be negative 1. So write 1 down 1. We're going to have, instead of this, we're going to have this. We've flipped or reflected it around the x-axis by making it negative. If we have y equals negative x parentheses squared, that's going to be different. That's going to be shifting it around y. And that's not really going to work. No, that's not going to work. I mean, it does work. It actually does work. y equals negative x squared does indeed mean that we're going to rotate around the y-axis. The problem is, is that if you remember, f of x, uh, y equals x squared is an even function, which means it's the same on either side of the axis. So in fact, negative 1 squared is still 1. So we can flip it around the axis and get the same thing. So let's use x cubed. cubed, and you'll notice that instead of this, we're going to get this. So that's what, um, that's what these transformations are really all about. There are a lot of different um, types of, I mean, these are, those are your basic transformations. We're going to do a lot of graphing particularly in chapter four. And when we do that graphing, we're gonna look at a whole lot of different techniques about how to flip and manipulate functions. But for right now, we're gonna look at composite functions. Uh, when you wanna make a combination of functions, we call it a composite, you know, f o g of x. You've probably seen this in pre-calculus. What this literally means is it's f, of g of x. So for instance, if we have f of x equals x squared and g of x is x minus 3, then f of g of x is very simply x minus 3 g squared. And conversely, that would mean that g of f of x, in other words, g of f of x, we find f of x is x squared, and then we plug that wherever there was an x in g of x, so x squared minus 3 is g of f of x. So that's the way composite functions work. We'll do some work with composite functions, but it won't be too extensive. So that's basically everything that I have to say about transformations. 
which means that right now we're going to go to the big problem. And next time we're going to talk about, what are we talking about next time? Well, we're not going to talk about graphing calculators. We're going to talk about exponential functions. That should be fun. I like those. So the last or the big problem for today is a stone is dropped into a lake, creating a circular ripple that travels outward at a speed of 60 centimeters a second. Express the radius r of this circle as a function of the time t in seconds. If a is the area of the circle as a function of the radius, find a composite as a function of r and interpret it. In other words, you're going to find r as a function. It's going to be r of t because you're going to find the radius as a function of time. It's a little bit of a hint for you. And then you're going to find area. And area is going to be A of R. In other words, you should be working with A of R of T. And that's a little bit of a hint for you. Go forth and conquer, and I will see you next time. Take care, y'all.